Hello and welcome to Weekend Projects. This weekend marks the one year birthday of Weekend Projects. For the past year, every week, I've made something and I made a video about how to make it. Let's celebrate. A candle's nice and cupcakes are tasty, but a jet would be way more awesome. I'm turning to Make Volume 5. William Gerstel's written this awesome article about how to make a jam jar jet. So we're gonna make one. This thing's gonna be awesome. It wouldn't be a jam jar jet without a jam jar, and I've got one right here. I'm gonna use this because unfortunately my jam got all moldy and gross, so I've gotta wash this out first. Okay, I'm putting the top down on a piece of wood so that I don't drill into my nice desk. And drilling a hole here. Perfect. Now it's time to sand up the edges. I'm a perfectionist about making round circles exactly round. Next it's time to drill the diffuser holes, about a quarter inch down. We need to do four of these with an eight inch drill bit. Now it's time to assemble the diffuser. I'm a little concerned here because these two, when they fit together, look to be significantly bigger than the diffuser in the instructions. So I may just have to end up using one of these. We'll see. Next, cut four lengths of approximately four inches of wire. Put the wire through the holes in the diffuser and then wind it all up so it's nice and attached. Do this with all four. Next it's time to hang your diffuser from the jar using the copper wires. You want to keep about a quarter inch from the top of the diffuser to the top of the jar. Then it's time to screw it on down. I'm just going to put the top on here and screw it on in. It'll get a little bit smushed in there, and, but you really want a good seal to make this work. Now I'm ready for fuel. Methyl alcohol is the jam jar jet fuel of choice. You can get this as gas line antifreeze. Basically what this is, is methyl alcohol. In this brand, they even say that it's jet fuel. Go ahead and stick the jar in the freezer for a few minutes before ignition. This will keep the jar cooler and hopefully keep it from breaking. Fire is dangerous and pulse jet engines are even more dangerous. Your safety is in your hands. I'm wearing an extra pair of safety glasses and I've got an extension lighting device. That's because I don't want to get close to this thing at all. I haven't been able to get this to work, and so I've removed this part of the diffuser. This is going to make the diffuser smaller, which looks a lot closer to the size that the original one in the instructions looks like. Try. Try again. It worked! Now I'm going to wait until it's nighttime so that I can actually see the flame. Okay, that was way better than a birthday candle. I tried it again afterwards because I felt like the hole might be too big and I covered it over with a bamboo skewer just to close off the hole a little bit and you can see what happened. That crack was the sound of the jar breaking. I think it's interesting though that clearly the size of the hole makes a difference as to how powerful the engine is. These things require some fussing. Now you know how to make a jam jar jet. Okay, uh, it's been a really great year here at Weekend Projects. And I want to say a special thank you to all the people who've collaborated with me and to all the watchers who've left comments and to all the people who've been so supportive of this Weekend Project podcast. Now, check out all the archives at makezine.com slash podcast. Go out and make stuff and have a great weekend.